The objective for this video is to create a simple to understand yet robust guide that will provide all the tools to play Devil Jin at an intermediate level without overwhelming the viewer. It's a difficult task, but it's exactly what I would be looking for if I was trying to pick up a new character in Tekken 8. So let's begin with why you should play Devil Jin. Number one, electrics. So this is a fantastic poke, a fantastic whiff punish tool, a fantastic combo tool. And although it is locked behind a little bit of mechanical difficulty, completing the input is highly satisfying and addicting. Reason number two is Devil Jin gets incredibly high reward off of normal hit lows. Other characters can get pretty good damage off of counter hit lows, but Devil Jin does not need that. That is 45 damage off of Hell Sweet. Reasons number three, four, and five are all about Devil Jin's heat. So he is one of the strongest and most consistent heat engagers, one of the strongest game plans in heat, and finally, one of the best heat smashes in the game that will keep your opponent locked down in neutral. Reason number six is Devil Jin's jab. In fact, his 1-1 string might be the best jab string in the game. Very easily confirmable into a hard knockdown. And because of this, it's gonna be a fantastic neutral poke tool, an offensive tool to keep pressure, and an Abari tool on defense. And the last reasons to play Devil Jin are gonna be as high damage and as great neutral. So let's get into that now. Devil Jin's neutral game plan is actually quite simple. Keep your opponent out and contend space with your strong pokes. If you think your opponent's gonna poke back, well then create opportunities for whiff punishes with sidesteps and back dashes. But that's easier said than done. So we're gonna go over the tools that I believe to be necessary, as well as when and why to use them. So let's start with our layer one pokes. I would consider 1-1 to be the strongest option to threaten from the very start of a match. Multi-hitting, a double high, and once again, easily hit confirmable into a knockdown. Our next option is gonna be a very similar one, electric. The difference being it's much more difficult to whiff punish this, and it grants much higher reward, in fact, a full combo on hit. But your two primary pokes being highs can be a little difficult. Your opponent might be incentivized to dash him with a low and low profile them. Well, that's where up forward four comes into play. This is a low crush mid check that is also a heat engager. While up forward four can be a fantastic mid poke in that closer to mid range, forward forward two is often the way. This move is highly variable in the timing that it comes out as well as the range because you're essentially doing it from a dash. And if you space it correctly, your opponent really doesn't get a turn back. If you find that your opponent is highly respectful of your demon pause, well, then you can mix in a while running three. To do an instant while running attack, you triple tap forward into the button, in this case, three. Now, this is plus six on block, giving you a weighted RPS situation, as well as tracks to Devil Jin's weak side on sidestep. If you're looking for fast mid pokes, that's gonna be your down forward one, as well as your down forward four. The difference being down forward four is more range, but is less favorable frame data on both hit and block. And down forward one has a follow-up that is variable timed, as well as better frame data on both hit and block. And if you're looking for a low to represent, well, down back two is pretty good. It's gonna be plus three on hit. We'll go over the offensive options a little bit later in the video. And on block, it is not launch punishable. And finally, if you find your opponent to be very respectful, then you can begin your offense with a wave dash in. So what exactly is a wave dash? Well, we input it by tapping forward, then down, and then ending on down forward to go into this stance. Now, the reason that we use wave dashes are number one, to access those strong moves, and number two, to stay tracked with our opponent. If I do multiple wave dashes, you'll see that I will stay aligned. But that's not to say that wave dash itself tracks onto the opponent. If I do one, let me do it after an actual electric. If I do one, I'm gonna be pointing to where they were. But if I cancel a wave dash, when I cancel it, I will realign with the opponent. Therefore, by doing many wave dashes, I will stay aligned with the opponent and threaten many options, such as the low and the overhead that we saw earlier, or mid, sorry, at many different timings. I can do this at an immediate timing. I can do it at a delayed timing. I can change it with a mid at the same timing and it can be very overwhelming for your opponent to deal with. So when do we represent wave dash? Number one, it's gonna be from a heat engager where you are guaranteed a wave dash makes up option. Number two is gonna be after a, knock, a knockdown where you have already conditioned them to not go for wake up attacks. One way to bait that by the way would be, you know, sidestepping it, but you can also just represent that wave dash 
to mix them up on their wake up. And number three is gonna be when you recognize that your opponent is respectful of quote unquote, your turn. An example of this, let's set the opponent to, to mash after this, after this hit, I am plus nine and therefore the opponent probably should be mashing there because I'm pretty close. One option that I'm gonna always represent layer one at the beginning of a match is this into a full combo that is my back four into a pretty easy hit confirm. And after they get hit by that once or twice, they're not gonna wanna mash on there anymore. They might even just block. I know, hard to believe. But the next time I do it, I recognize that they've blocked it. And so now I know that my opponent is respectful of the situation. So this might be a time where I believe it is safer to go for a not so safe option such as wave dash. So before we were threatening a fast mid, now we're threatening a wave dash where we can threaten multiple timings for lows and mids. So what attacks should we use in our wave dash? Number one, it's gonna be that low health sweep. That is CD4, crouch dash into four. It is two follow-ups, four, four, which is gonna be used in the corner for plus frames because the other one doesn't combo and four into one plus two for that full screen uh, mid-screen conversion <laughs> with a lot of corner carry. Our mid option, if we also want a variable timed one, is going to be Demon Paw or up forward four. We use these because in mid-screen it's a heat engager and in the corner they both wall splat into a combo. But of course, there are more. The first of the advanced options will be Instant While Standing 2. It grants a full combo on hit does not require heat, whether you have it or not, maybe you don't want to go into heat, as well as it is only minus 12 on block. So most of the time, that's just going to be jab punished. So how do we input it? You'll notice that whenever you do a wave dash, your legs jiggle a little bit. That right there is going to be your visual cue for when to input the while standing too. The way that you input it is from the CD at that exact timing, you press back, and two. And if you find this to be a little too difficult, you can also input it alternatively to get a different timing as well. From a full wave dash after the cancel, you can do a half circle back with an emphasis on the down input to get it as well. So this is two different timings we can threaten it. Next up is gonna be a more situational option and that is CD one plus two. You use this because it tracks, you use this because it is safe, only minus nine on block, but uh, it is also very slow. If you look at the frames in the bottom left, it is 26 frames. So it is reactable, but of course it does have a little spin move. So it does look a lot like Hell Sweep. So you might be wondering, why would I use this mid screen? Clearly, this is uh, not so good on hit. You're just gonna no get a knockdown as compared to an entire combo with the while standing too. Well, in heat, we actually do get a follow-up as well as a full combo, 62 damage. And lastly, we have our low committal option, CD4. And that is not letting it rock because obviously that would be hell sweet, but you just let go of the down and forward input. And at any point in time, tap four. This is only minus three on block, meaning we still have wiggle room to RPS with side steps or back dash and play for a whiff punish. And on hit, we are plus eight, which is a magical number and we'll figure out why right now in the offensive section. Because tech and offense is so interactive and RPS heavy, I believe the best way to go over offensive strategy is to show you the strong tools and which defensive option they counter. And after we do that, I'll show some example block strings to put it all into context. The first and most important tool is gonna to be Devil Jin's one. It's got good range, it's plus one on block, will frame trap against highs and mids. Of course, lows and special lows will duck under them and they're susceptible to sidesteps and of course ducks. Now, the reason that jabs can be so threatening is because on hit, they are plus eight, meaning it's very difficult for your opponent to justify challenging afterwards, especially since you're so close. The opponent right now is set to jab on hit or on anything, I guess. And you'll see that even my throw is going to frame trap, but I'm actually so plus that I can go for slower moves to counter hit fish. And that's exactly what I'll do with back four. From plus eight, I highly recommend layer oneing these two options. Number one being back four into this confirm. Note that you only get this full confirm on counter hit. So it's really only good to use this normal in this kind of context when you're fishing for a frame trap. And number two, down three. Both of these options, by the way, 
back four and down three will catch sidesteps on the plus frames. And one special thing about this low here is that on a trade with the jab in particular, you do get an extension with down four, down forward four, four. Of course, alternatively to the single jab, we can go for one, one, which will of course sell frame trap and guarantee you that hard knockdown and hit. And on block, it's only minus one, meaning it's not necessarily your opponent's turn. Both players are still RPSing for a hit. So if jabs are our fastest moves and our frame trap options to keep our opponent in line, why would I ever go for a slower move that makes me susceptible to mashing? Well, jabs carry a lot of risk, and that goes for both ends here. Uh, number one, they're obviously duckable and launch punishable on reaction, as well as sidesteppable and punishable on reaction. So the answer to that question is that you're sacrificing the frame tight frame trap for utility in your strings. For example, in back forward two, three, we give up the ability to frame trap, but this string will do a lot more damage. It will cover crouching as opposed to jab and it'll cover sidewalk as well. So yes, they can jab this string, but if they don't, it's much better in every other situation. Another very strong option for Devil Jin is down back one. This is used on your own minus frames to prevent your opponent from taking a turn back with their fastest move, a jab or any sort of high. For example, after one one, we already saw earlier was minus one. If they try to take it back, I can hit them with this option and be plus six, as opposed to trying to jab again and getting counter hit. So why is this so strong? Well, Devil Jin's down back one. Other characters have a special low, but Devil Jin is special because he can immediately cancel into a standing move, such as, uh, let's go back forward too. That's usually my go-to. So I tap forward and then I immediately go into the standing move. This is very strong for keeping your offense and preventing your opponent from taking turns back. Next, let's talk about the first mid on offense and that's gonna be back forward too. This is a mid with good tracking. It's 15 frames and it's only minus nine on block. So the move itself is absolutely safe. But beyond that, there are actually follow-ups. The first one being one can be big delayed as well as is easily hit confirmable. And uh, that one follow-up is minus 10, but also has another follow-up you can threaten afterwards. That third follow-up, or second follow-up technically, is sidesteppable. So generally the way I like to use this is I'll throw it back forward two, and if I got hit, I'll just go one two. Now that last hit is not guaranteed, but will be a frame trap. So your opponent is absolutely locked down if they get hit by the first two series. The other way to use back forward two is just to hard commit into back forward two three. And the reason you'd use this is because it is plus nine on hit, which once again is that sweet number where we can threaten our frame traps. And just to be thorough, here's that back forward two one two string. If I confirm the first hit and then they block afterwards, I'm only minus eight and we're pretty much back to neutral. If you're looking for a quick mid on offense, down forward one is pretty good at it. it gives you plus five and hit, absolutely safe on block. And because it's not that minus, it's another situation where you can use down back one to prevent your opponent from taking a turn back. Some more mid options that can be used to call it ducks, particularly if you want to get into heat, are forward forward two and up forward four normals that we've already seen before. Note that when you use these up close, you are minus eight and you can find yourself pretty close to your opponent. When it comes to electric, the first thing that you have to understand is that if your opponent blocks this, this is not your turn. This is pretty much back to neutral with the caveat that if you both press a button, yours is probably gonna win. But that's not to say that electric is not good on offense because it definitely is. Earlier, I showed a string where I used down back one to prevent my opponent from jabbing back and then stayed in. Another way though to stop jab is to sidestep into electric for much more reward. Another way to use electric is to take advantage of its tracking properties. We talked about earlier how wave dashes have a bit of tracking in them every time you press forward and Devil Jin's electric actually just has the best tracking out of all the electrics in the game. It just hits kind of wider. And so a string like jab into electric can be used reliably to catch sidestep. When it comes to lows on offense, Devil Jin primarily threatens down three. We saw it as a frame trap tool earlier, but can also be used to chip out the opponent. Doesn't have high evasion, but it does have great frame data. It's minus one on hit and on block, I believe it's minus 12, so not launch punishable. The other low is down back two, which does have high evasion and is plus three on hit. After down back two, we have several ways to keep our opponent locked down and prevent them from mashing. Number one being while standing four, plus eight on hit, minus three on block. We talked about this earlier. Great frame data, 
Note that if your opponent starts representing sidestepping after getting hit by the low, then these frame trap options aren't gonna work. Instead, what you'd like to do is either chase the sidestep or just be willing to go back to neutral. One final option though, that is going to be mashing as well as sidestepping is going for throws, which of course are duckable. But your opponent's not likely to be uh, ducking after getting hit by that low. But this is a good time to mention that Devil Jin has a complete throw game. Quarter circle back one plus three is our one tech. Of course, uh, down forward two plus three is our two tech. And then up forward one plus two is our one plus two tech all of which can be threatened directly out of down back two. Last thing to note about the throws is that the one and the two throw don't give great Oki, the two even being minus six, but the one plus two actually puts your opponent in a situation where you can go for mix or just run up and get that OTG with back four. It's not guaranteed, but worst case scenario, they block it. Now let's go over a block string and talk about how offense can change depending on what your opponent threatens. Let's start with a block string that targets mashing jab. One, 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 down back one. And if the entire sequence is blocked while well, minus five at this range, I can just back dash and we're back to neutral. Now let's go over the block string and show what it looks like to jab against it at each point in time. From jab to jab, jab, I get my knockdown. From jab, jab to down back one, I stand cancel into any standing string that I want. In this case, back forward two three while this block string is very good if your opponent is only mashing it can be very bad if your opponent represents crouch one way we can call out crouch instead of just going for this string is throwing it a mid after the jab the mid this one will give us plus frames this one will put us into heat and this one will give us even better plus frames and get us some pretty good damage but that's not the only way they can beat this block string sidestepping Works just as well. In fact, the opponent might get better reward from it. So let's do the block string again. Jab and a jab, jab, sidesteppable and punishable. Jab, jab and a down back one, also sidesteppable and theoretically punishable if they picked a mid there. So how do we call this out? Well, my go-to is to just do a little run up. Running up and then taking the turn back with jab is a very consistent way to stay on your opponent and prevent them from sidestepping. Fortunately though, Devil Jin also is a very consistent tracking move in back forward two which should catch on both sides. But what do I do if my opponent is blocking everything? They're attacking all of my throws, and every time I go for a frame trap, they're just blocking my mids, and they're not falling for my staggers. They're just patient. Well, when your opponent is being patient, the best thing to do is threaten our wave dashes. You can get your offense started from pretty much anywhere that you find your opponent respecting. But that's not to say that you have to take any risks or play any of these RPS mind games. If you don't want to extend your offense, you don't have to. You can always just go for side steps and back dashes and then get back to neutral. Now let's talk about corner offense where the biggest difference is that your reward is much higher. So much so that generally you'd rather play a low commit game plan when you have your opponent cornered. So let's take a look at this reward. How good can it be? Well, forward forward two, an option we've seen a lot throughout this guide. Gives a wall splat, and so you're going to go into this confirm for 65 damage. Now, you don't have to have heat ready. It could actually be after you've already used heat or while you're in heat. You're still going to get that wall splat into the same combo. I messed it up there, but you get the point. That goes the same for up forward four. That goes the same for electric. You can get a second electric in before you go into it. That goes for the follow-up on down forward one on the two hit. Note that, that doesn't combo, so just getting hit by the two. That goes for back forward 2-1-2. Two, two. Once again, does not combo, just that final hit. That also goes for back 1-2, our 12 frame punish, as well as back 2-3, our 14 frame punish. That also goes for 1 plus 2 throw against the wall. Same thing. And finally, CD 1 plus 2, which you'll find pretty useful because that tracking really does matter. And for a string that doesn't wall splat, but gives a knockdown like 1-1-2, one, one, well, the Oki is going to be a lot better because you're so close to the opponent. And because we have so many mids with such high reward, our lows are a lot more hidden than before. So while they're looking for forward forward 2, or up forward 4, or CD1 plus 2, now I can hell sweep in. Another thing that changes in the corner is electric, because you're actually very close to your opponent for the plus 5, meaning you can actually frame trap from it and it is pretty much your turn 
You can frame trap with jab. You can call out side steps with back forward two. You can frame trap with the throw and cover side step. Of course, the risk of it getting teched or the opponent ducking. And uh, you can, of course, just stagger electrics and then back off, play low middle and keep your opponent cornered. And the final tip I have for you in the corner is using down back one plus two. This is a variably timed mid that gets ever extending a range as you hold it. And it also tracks the entire time that you're holding it. Now this move is very strange and has a lot of weird properties. So we're gonna go over all of them first on block. One thing to note is that as it charges, you grow an orb in your hand. That was an awful way to show it. You grow an orb in your hand. So we're gonna start by talking about what happens if you let it go before the orb comes out. It's minus nine, whether you're against the wall or not. If you charge for the orb, then against the wall, it is plus 24, which is plus enough for you to threaten like dash and hell sweep as a frame trap. If they're not against the wall, then it's plus 17, but with a lot of pushback. And finally, on a full charge, whether they're against the wall or not, it is plus 10 and actually just lets you combo into 1-1-2 one, one, for a very close knockdown. On hit, the move is a lot more straightforward. On no charge, it's plus four. On orb charge, it's plus seven. And on full charge, you get the combo that we saw earlier. And the last thing you gotta know about down back one plus two, the cherry on top is that at any point in time, you can tap forward to cancel into Morning Crow stance. It's a special stance that Devil Jin has and it can be accessed multiple ways. The first of which is going directly into the stance with forward three. You can also do so from a run with three plus four. On Devil Jin's up one, you'll be forced into Morning Crow stance on hit or block. Note that it's Devil Jin's up one that comes out when Heat Smash is blocked. But there are some moves that you only go into Morning Crow stance if you get the hit and hold forward. Those being down forward two into hold forward, while standing one plus two into hold forward, and while standing three into hold forward. So what are the follow-ups in the stance? First one is a plus eight on block slow mid, and on hit, grants you a free back 4 OTG for 36 damage in total. Follow-up number two, tap it twice, 2-2. Two, two. For 32 damage, it's a heat engager, double mid, minus 14 on block. So it is punishable, but not launch punishable. Also much quicker. Morning Crow 3 is a move that hits opponents on the ground and is minus seven on block, safe. And Morning Crow 4 is used in combos. Note that when you're in heat, you have access to one more option, and that's pressing your heat smash button during Morning Crow for an unblockable high. So now let's contextualize these options with up one as if we're throwing it out neutral. On block, yes, we can go for one and it is highly favorable because it's plus eight, but this option is both mashable and sidesteppable for a full punish for your opponent. So to prevent those options, we go for two, two, which of course is tracking a faster option, but is minus 14 on block. So we're either giving ourselves plus frames and being susceptible to the sidestep or mash, or we are denying those options, but being punishable if the opponent was patient. And when you're in heat, Morning Crow stance becomes a lot more difficult to deal with because your opponent now has to think about these timings as well as whether or not they should duck the unblockable. The good news is that you don't have to play these mind games and Morning Crow comes from a hit. In this case, Morning Crow 1 is guaranteed and it frame traps. So if the opponent respects, you will be plus eight guaranteed. And if they do anything to disrespect, such as mash or sidestep, then we'll hit them and get our free OTG for 36 damage. Regarding the other ways to get into Morning Crow, they all only come out on hit. So you don't have to worry about confirming whether or not the opponent was hit. But there is one distinct difference between all of those options and up one. And that being that the Morning Crow one is actually susceptible to Power Crush and Rage Heart. I wouldn't say this trick is widely known, but if someone does threaten it against you, the way to beat it, of course, is to go into your 2-2. Now let's go over some of the strong defensive moves that Devil Jin has. The first one being down back one that we saw earlier into a strong follow-up. Next up, Devil Jin does have an armor move in down one, 
Devil Jin has another armored move in back one three. It's an armored parry. I don't use this one as much because I find it to be inconsistent. So here it'll be one of the one string, but one into the mid, it'll hard lose to. Devil Jin also has up four, which is a highly evasive move. It starts with high crush and then ends with low crush. So in a jab, jab string, it'll win. This one's interesting because you can actually get a full combo from it. Keep in mind that up four is very punishable on block, and so is this next one. Back three, probably the strongest and most evasive tool that Devil Jin has. And additionally, it is a heat engager. So this move will pretty much low crush at any point in time, even from severe minus frames. So like right here, we'll do it from minus six. Absolutely low crush into the heat engager. And as far as it beating mids, that is pretty much just determined by the spacing. So if I do this up close, I get caught. Keep in mind, that's not the worst situation because you get hit in the air, which means you're taking less damage and the opponent might not be able to pick up a random stray hit. And from a little farther away, I'll be able to avoid it and punish it. So this is something that you have to use meticulously. Now let's go over Devil Jin's punishes. We'll start with the standing ones. At 10 frames, we have 112 for a hard knockdown as well as 25 damage. At 12 frames, we have back 1-2 also for a hard knockdown and 30 damage. At 14 frames, we have back 2-3, and it's also a heat engager. At 15 frames, we have can-can. I haven't showed this combo yet, so I'll do that now. Very similar to the electric combo. And if it's much worse, I might go for electric, but I believe electric can be as low as 15 frames. I'm not about that, though. Now for the while standing punishes. At 11 frames, we have 4-4, four, four, 30 damage, plus 4 on hit. At 13 frames, we have 1-2 and a hold forward Morning Crow. And for the while standing punishes, at 11 frames, we have while standing 4-4 for 30 damage and plus 4 on hit. At 13 frames, we have while standing 1 plus 2 and a hold forward 1. That'll guarantee you that plus 8 in front of your opponent. And finally, at minus 15 frames, we have while standing 2, which gives a full conversion on hit. Now let's talk about Devil Jin's Heat. There are two key strengths that Devil Jin has when he's in heat. The first being the one plus two follow-up off of certain key moves, and the second being access to his two heat smashes. Let's begin with the follow-ups. Really, I only use these for two reasons. Number one being after the CD one plus two to do it again and to follow it up with a combo. And number two is specifically when I'm doing this combo. for this extension at the end. While there are other buttons and strings that do take advantage of this follow-up, these are the only ones that I actually see as necessary. What is necessary though is Devil Jin's Heat Smash. And this right here is where the true strength lies in Devil Jin's Heat Game Plan. Heat Smash is a casual full screen mid in the 52 damage that also tracks. And Devil Jin's other Heat Smash is accessed through Morning Crow Stance as an unblockable. What this functionally means is that while we are in heat, we are threatening to both stop the opponent from approaching at any point in time, as well as sidestep, and we are also punishing them for being too patient. And keep in mind, if you Morning Crow in, you don't even necessarily have to do the unblockable. You can just go into Morning Crow 1 and preserve the heat bar for future use. This can make it very difficult for your opponent to do anything, and often matches are at a standstill until Devil Jin's heat is gone. And that's all I've got for the guide. The rest of the video is just going to be BNBs. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you think I missed anything. Let me know if you learned something. And uh, yeah, check out the links in the description if you really want to support. Bye bye.